Hey guys and welcome back to Battlefront updates and some more Fallen Order content. Because I just came back from EA Play and thanks to EA I actually got a chance to get some hands on time with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order as well as see uh, some behind the scenes uh, footage and have an interview with the developers. So in this video I wanted to delve into all of that and I'm going to show you some parts of the interview at the end of the video and I'm going to start off with my impressions. So the first thing we got to do was to see one of the developers play through a 30 minute demo which is basically the public demo that you saw in the reveal plus an extra around 10 minutes at the start which includes when Cal first made Saw you get to climb up into an AT-80 take it over and then drive that and uh, shoot some other AT-80s stormtroopers and similarly I'm not gonna dwell into all the details of that extra footage because I think that might be something they'll make public eventually plus there's plenty of articles and uh, and another video detailing exactly what it contained but in short you you play as cal you you walk around in a little swamp you climb up uh, on an at-80 because there's a bunch of like uh, vines and uh, other uh, stuff hanging off the at-80s so you climb up board it kill some scout troopers and then take over the at-80 and use it to destroy another at-80 and then kind of march forward destroying a bunch of um, well, stormtroopers, ATSTs, and other Imperial troopers, and then Saw appears all of a sudden, kind of grappling hooking onto the AT-80 and asking, who are you? Uh, so I thought that was a little bit strange how they kind of first meet right there, and then 10 minutes later, in the demo that we see in the public, they're, they're kind of working together. So it went from like, basically a 10 minute time span of Saw meeting Cal for the first time, and then working together um, really closely. So it was almost like, I don't, I don't see how Saw or Cal would trust each other that easily, but oh well. That was the only part that I thought was a little bit strange. But as for my hands on time, because I'm sure you've seen the gameplay, you've heard about this, uh, this extra 10 minutes, but how did it feel playing the game? The first thing I can say is that just playing those 5 minutes that I got made me a lot more hyped for the game than seeing any gameplay or reading any articles. And the reason for that was that there was a lot of things you felt and experienced when playing that you don't see in the gameplay at all. And uh, just to clarify, what I played was something called the Gauntlet, which is basically a bit like a wave-based mode. So first there was like uh, one scout trooper, then there was two scout troopers, then there was three scout troopers, and then there was three scout troopers and two stormtroopers, and uh, eventually also purge troopers. So it was basically something where you could try out the combat, because the demo you see uh, is something you're supposed to play after you've played already three hours of the game, so if we were to jump straight in there we might not play very well and we might get stuck on mechanics or similarly, so it was smarter to let us try basically a combat simulator, um, which was really good. But one of the first things I noticed that is actually like a massive, huge difference to what we see in the demo is that the force meter you see down in the at the bottom, which again I will be showing you, I will just roll the, the normal game people already seen in the background now, but that force meter in the demo, as far as I understand, he has pretty much unlimited force powers there. You can see him throw people around and kill people with the force powers pretty much all the time. However, uh, in the well, the actual game and the demo we played, that's not the case. But you use like maybe one force pull, one force push, and a saber throw, and you're out of force powers. And the only way you get that back is by killing all the enemies currently in the battle, and then you will recharge it, or by by hitting successfully through a block or similarly. Which means that multiple times you usually use your force power to take out maybe two enemies. And then for the next two or three enemies, you had to only take them out using your lightsaber, your parrying, your blocking, your dodging, which made things a lot harder than it uh, looked like in the demo. I think pretty much all of us who tried in that room died before we actually got that far because we, we really like had to learn the mechanics and of dodging, parrying, deflecting and all those kind of things that looked pretty easy when you saw it in the demo. Plus most importantly the fact that you don't have unlimited force powers that really made everything so much more interesting and i think if i if i had a chance to play a bit more i'd be a little bit more careful with when i use the force powers and not just start off by throwing my lightsabers a couple of time and times and then i was out of, of force powers uh, so th that was really interesting and then trying to learn all the mechanics such as the fact that you have a block but there are some unblockable attacks, such as from the Purge Trooper. It, it kind of glows red and it does a little spin thing and you can't block that, which means that you have to dodge it. And then parrying slash deflecting is basically when you click 
the block button. Either when a blast or a bolt is about to hit you, or when a, when a melee attack is about to hit you. Then you will kind of, well, if it's a blaster bolt, you will deflect it back at the enemy and kill them. If it's a melee, you will kind of stagger them back and break through their block so you can hit them back. So that's basically what I had to do against the Purge Trooper. Uh, when I was out of force powers against the Purge Trooper, all I could do was try to dodge its unblockable attacks and then try to parry its blockable attacks to kind of stagger through its block. And that was really hard. Uh, I took out the first Purge Trooper because I used my force powers really well. But then uh, the second one, I just used up my force powers. And then I tried to time those uh, parries, but I ended up just tanking all of those non-blockable hits and dying eventually. But I also thought it's funny that like the Perch Trooper and pretty much any other trooper, they die in just a few hits if you hit through. And they also have a stamina bar that you might be able to see in the demo as well. Uh, and if you just go up to like a scout trooper and just hit him like multiple times with a lightsaber, it, the stamina will go down and then you can kill them. Uh, but the Perch Trooper, that didn't really work because they're really strong. So you kind of have to try and... and parry or time your attacks you can't just go up and slash and try to slash down their stamina and then kill them but i just like the fact that when you do get through a block and when you do parry you will kill them in like two hits or one hit depending on the trooper which makes sense because it's a lightsaber it shouldn't be something you can tank 10 hits of and then there was a bunch of other combos you could do like there was like a charge up attack that i kind of accidentally used once to take out the purge trooper because i managed to time it when it was not blocking there was simply just a lot of combos you could do and you could feel the depth of the actual lightsaber combat a lot more when you played it than when you watched it And it I could really understand the thoughtful combat and having to think about every time you use a force power or an ability to make sure that you don't uh, Well tank a big hit Run out of force powers or anything like that. So again, I only got to play five minutes I really wish I got to play more uh, But it was really fun and made me again more excited to play the game than watching the game did simply because it looked pretty straightforward when uh, when when we saw the demo because obviously there was a pro playing and they had unlimited force powers which you won't have in the full game and and so on also like the kind of feedback system when you successfully deflected it was like a little pling sound uh, which, which was really satisfying and just deflecting blaster bolts from stormtroopers but not was not that hard you just gotta learn to time it it was harder to parry a melee attack in my opinion especially against the purge trooper um, so I, I'm, I really just want to get into it and, and kind of wish I had more time to play where I could learn the mechanics and uh, well, it was kind of embarrassing because I was the first one in the room to play and I was just getting destroyed by that last purge trooper and the developer was like, you gotta parry, you gotta parry, like, I'm trying, I'm trying, okay? Uh, <laughs> because I had no force powers, there was nothing I could do other than try to dodge, parry and so on. There might be some other stuff I could do combos, but that's the only thing I knew how to counter in that particular situation with no force powers. So overall, really good impression of the combat and I think you gotta play to get a full feel, plus the fact that they had unlimited force powers in the demo just makes it look a little bit easier, I think. But now I wanted to get over to the interview part. I took some questions out from Twitter that you guys asked and asked that straight to the developers simply. And just keep in mind that I did this interview before I played the game, so no, none of the questions are based on my experience. So yeah, some of the things I already discussed in the video were things that I, I didn't feel or know about uh, when I asked them these questions. But hopefully you will find some of the answers interesting anyways. So, so yeah, thank you very much for watching and enjoy the right, interview. Right, so I'm sitting here with a couple of developers from Respawn working on Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Maybe we can start off with you guys, just a quick introduction of what you do. Sure. Uh, I'm Aaron Contreras, I'm the narrative lead on Fallen Order. And I'm Nick Laviers, I'm the audio director. So I'm a bit curious on the replayability, like for instance I know you have skill points that you can use in the skill tree. Do you think this is going to be the game where people play it once and they're happy, and or do you think it's going to be something that they replay multiple times and is it possible to play with different play styles every time you play through the game similarly? I think we're trying to allow players to color their own experience through the game. So we have a skill tree that you can make choices to go through, but we're not saying that you can't fill out the entire skill tree on your first okay. playthrough yet. We're not I'm, not. I'm not saying that. Um, and there'll be certain choices you make in conversation with your companion characters in the game that will influence your relationship with them. Um, I'd say more so than uh, we can't. We're not really talking about like a new game plus mm -hmm. at this point in time. We're still focused on on trying to finish the game, mm -hmm. but we are trying to make sure that players will have the ability to retraverse with our design throughout okay. the world. So it's not a purely linear experience. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of depth and secrets you could get back in through mm -hmm. a, a subsequent playthrough if you didn't do that in your first time through. Okay. So yeah, customization is something that I I think I've seen. You can you can customize your lightsaber and BD1 and some ships. Mm -hmm. um, 
how is that going to work and is there anything else other than those three things that you will be able to customize? You'll also be able to customize Cal's outfit to okay. some extent. So it's BD-1, uh, your ship, the Mantis, mm -hmm. um, lightsabers, and then Cal's outfit. Mm -hmm. um, some of that's driven through pre-order yeah. or like a deluxe edition stuff, but the vast majority of customization options are unlocked in the game. Mm -hmm. So we're not doing any sort of microtransactions, which we've kind of beaten to death and <laughs> impressed by now. Yeah. Um, but you will be able to go out and explore the game. Mm -hmm. And if you go a little bit off the beaten path, kind of getting back into... Yeah you know, replayability or depth inside the game. And if you go find secrets or do difficult puzzles or really engage with the game, you'll be able to unlock more customization options. I, I know this, this might be a bit spoilery, but one thing I was really happy to see when in the gameplay reveal was that you saw Guerrero was in there. So I'm a bit curious, without guessing say too much, will there be any, any other recognizable characters in the game? Nick, you want to take uh, this one? Well, we can't, we can't say. Uh, we can say that there that we're planning on there being some, possibly, yeah, but we can't say exactly who. Okay. Fair enough, that's a, that's a good answer. Uh, and also this is a question that, so how how much time do you think someone would spend playing with this game? And would it vary a lot for someone who's very lore nerdy and want to do every little thing, compared to someone who just want to plow through the game as fast as they possibly can? So do you think, uh, I don't I know, you know we probably can't give a number, but how long do you expect the game to be? It, yeah, we can't say exactly how long the game's going to be, but I think we've already talked about re replayability, and, and I, I, there's a lot in the game for people. There's a main path, but there's also a lot of stuff around the main path that you can do, which is going to be you know areas that you can explore off the main path to get to get rewards through the game. So, and and then again, of course, playing playing the game on different difficulty modes as well. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that was that was going to be another one of my questions. Uh, difficulty modes. Must, well, you just confirmed that you have that at least. But so, wha how's that going to look? Is it going to be one that's just super easy if you want to get one straight through, and one that's going to be like Dark Souls hard kind of? Or how's the what's your goal with the difficulty settings? We're still playing with the specifics of how many modes and what their exact mm -hmm. design will be. Um, obviously, like the way you build those is you you figure out your core experience, mm -hmm. and then you usually adapt to other difficulty modes once you've sort of locked that down or have a good sense of where that will be at. Um, but you know, Star Wars is for everyone. Like we really want anyone who has an interest in Star Wars, no matter where they're from or their skill as a gamer, to be able to pick this game up and enjoy it. So there will be a mode for you if you just want to experience yeah. the story, and there will be a mode for you if you really want to get down and dirty with the combat system. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's Good. Lot, there's lots of ways to play the game. I mean, I've, it's been interesting being here and watching other developers that I work with playing the game because they play the game very differently from what I play, which I think speaks a lot for the game and the depth of it. Yeah, that's something I saw in the in the gameplay there that stormtroopers seem pretty easy to take out. But if you want to, you can freeze the blaster bolt, force pull him, just because it's fun, not because you necessarily need to do it. Uh, so that that's I guess that's what you mean with like being able to play in very diff you the different way. Very creative with how you play the game with the combat, and I, I think that's a really cool. I mean, some of the stuff I've seen this weekend makes me want to go back to the studio and play the game again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. But it's also fair to say, again, without wanting to cater only to a hardcore gamer market, that in some situations, on some modes, uh, in some difficulty settings, you will need to be creative and you will need to be thinking fast yeah, well. and using your entire you know, Jedi toolkit from your buddy droid yeah. to your lightsaber to your force powers just to survive a situation. Yeah things can go wrong depending upon how the difficulties tune very 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 quickly okay. mm -hmm. so even a stormtrooper can get lucky i mean that's how the jedi died mm -hmm. you know there weren't sith running around killing them it was just clones yeah um so in great numbers they do present a threat especially to a half-trained yeah. padawan like cal kestis uh yeah well you mentioned clone i was a bit curious i know this is more of a lore thing but uh i've seen a lot of people wondering was it going to be stormtroopers or was it going to be clones but as far as we've seen it's they're full out imperial now yep. it, is there going to be any clones, or are they completely phased out by now, or what's the status of clones in the game? <laughs> uh, you're fighting stormtroopers throughout the majority of the game. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, there's a specific to, to get answer the Lord yeah. question. There's a specific point in the Star Wars timeline, which is before where our game is set, mm -hmm. when the Empire phases out all clones mm -hmm. and that phase two clone armor, mm -hmm. and the stormtroopers are introduced. Um, we see also the. Uh, Venator Star Destroyers from the Clone Wars era mm -hmm. get decommissioned and the Imperial Star Destroyers from the Imperial area get built. Mm -hmm. And at the opening of the game, Cal, you know, I think it's right there in Bracca, right? Yeah. His job is tearing apart those Venators. Mm -hmm. So we're past that point in the timeline when the switch has been made. Okay. Happening there. Okay. 
Yeah, another a, a bit of a specific question that I just noticed. I know it depends on the rating of the game and everything, but dismemberment, mm -hmm. like since we, it, uh, something I like is that it's very clear where the lightsaber has hit on whatever you hit because it's like glowing. Yeah. But it looked a bit strange if when you kind of just go straight through a stormtrooper, but they, they I know they can't just split apart. But you know what I mean? It's is it going to be any type of dismemberment for? A, parts of the body because it feels like the lightsaber goes straight through it should do some serious damage you know i think we're not talking too much about dismemberment but <laughs> i can say that the team is very excited to explore that opportunity <laughs> at the same time we're making a teen rated game yeah that's yeah. that's what i figured it's yeah. like it has to be so, yeah 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 but there will definitely be dismemberment of flame beetles yeah i have one question i'm a bit curious from a, I mean, this these days community community stuff is pretty important around games. So, as for camera, is there going to be any type of camera tool? Will Ansel be supported? Is there anything uh, like that uh, that's in plan? I think we have something in the works. You mean like a photo mode? Yeah, photo mode exactly. Oh yeah. Um, I think we have something in the works that should satisfy that urge. Okay. Without confirming a photo yeah. mode. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Fair enough. But we're we're. We're very aware, and we mm -hmm. we really into uh, making letting the community sort of like create content mm -hmm. out of the game in a game way that makes the game looks amazing. So yeah. we'll hopefully we'll be able to support that yeah. by the time we ship. Yeah. Awesome. And lastly, I'm just like curious, how has it been working? I don't know how many years it is now on the game, and not being able to talk about it. How has it been as a developer and to w working on something an awesome Star Wars game and not being able to talk to anyone about it, not being able to like. Yeah, I'm just curious how that feeling is. Um, it's kind of like being a kid and looking forward to your birthday, really. <laughs> We've all been waiting for the day when we can come out and show this yeah. and talk about it. It's been a long road, so it's kind of like been suppressed excitement all the <laughs> way along. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think Nick and I have both worked on a lot of games, and really the team back at Respawn is really experienced for the most part. We've all worked on a bunch of big IPs mm -hmm. and different titles. At the same time, Star Wars is special. Um, yeah. So it's a real lifetime opportunity for most of us, I think, to get a chance yeah. to work on this IP. Uh, I find, though, that I don't really feel like I want to run, read it, like run out and scream on the internet yeah. about what we're doing. I just want to make sure that what we deliver at the end yeah. of the day, that when yeah. people, what people play is as good as it possibly can be. So yeah. it's all about what we put in people's hands. It's not yeah. so much about yeah, talking absolutely. about it. Yeah.